Hey, how's everybody doing out there tonight, yeah? All right, good to hear, good to hear, good to hear. My name's Tommy, Tommy the Twist. Uh, you know, um, people always ask me, you know, uh, why they call you Tommy the Twist. And, um, you know, I'll tell you what, uh, what my mommy told me after I asked her that same question. Uh, she said, uh, shut up, Tommy, you're asking too many damn questions. All right, so, uh, so I got a quick story for you tonight. So, yeah, you want to you wanna listen to a story? Yeah. All right, good. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. You're going to hear it anyway, but here we are. I'm going to tell you a story about, um, let's see, about a man named Dante. He, he, he's not really named Dante in the story, but uh, we're going to call him Dante for a, a completely unrelated, non symbological reasons, obviously. Um, now, the thing about Dante is, um, growing up, he, you know, he didn't know who his dad was. That, you know, that happens to some kids sometimes. Uh, you know, his mom never knew if uh, he was sleeping with the fishes or with the showgirl from Vegas, but uh, you know, it's probably for the best you know, to figure out which, because if it wasn't one, it would have been the other eventually. Um, but no, Tommy, you know, he, he was the man of the house. He was, he was taking care of his mom growing up. And, uh, you know, eventually, uh, his, his mom got sick, like it happens. So Tommy had this burden of his mother on him. He, uh, no, Dante, my bad. Uh, don't read into that. Um, so Dante, right, um, had to take care of his mother. So he tried to find a way to, to earn enough money in order to take care of her, in order to pay for the, for the hospital stays and all the, all the medical treatments. So eventually, Dante got wrapped up in, uh, well, how do we say? Um, he became a fairly high-ranking member of a fairly well-known organization of, uh, you know, fairly legitimate businessmen. I think that's, that's fair to say. <laughs> now, um, now, Dante was, uh, you know, not a nice man. He, he did some bad things to some bad people. And by, by bad things to bad people, I mean he did some very bad things. Now, eventually, his mother wound up on a deathbed. But let me tell you, it was a nice deathbed. I'm talking like Rolls Royces on his way to heaven, seriously. But um, the last day that Dante ever saw his mother, he, you know, he hugged her, held her close, and she said, I love you, Dante. You were always a good boy. You were always a good man. And she passed away shortly after that. Now, this sat heavy on Dante, right in the pit of his stomach, because deep down he knew he was not a good man. He never was a good man. He never had the option to. This sat with him for weeks. Eventually, eventually one day, walking down the street, he saw, saw a homeless man, you know, begging for scraps, handouts, whatever people had. Dante didn't even uh, give him a, a second thought. I mean, honestly, I don't think he gave him a first thought. But uh, eventually, a week later, Dante was walking down that same street. They found the old man's body. And that was it. That was the last straw. He couldn't even muster up a single ounce of humanity for this man. He knew he had to do something. So Dante took himself down to the local chapel to go see Father Virgil. Now, he is just a pillar of the community. He, he, he was a, the pinnacle of what, of what, uh, what one should be in, in the community, being a, a good man and helping others. And Dante knew that if anyone knew what he was supposed to do, it would be this man. So Dante went to this beautiful, beautiful chapel, four-story tall, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful stone building, steeple. There we go. Thank you. Thanks. The audience participation here. Um, you know, stained glass windows as far as the eye can see, and and just a skylight that made it look like the eyes of God were just staring down at the pulpit. It was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. So so Dante takes his takes his way into into the church, and he goes to see Father Virgil, and he tells him his tale. He tells him his story about about growing up without his dad. And, and taking care of his mom and, and learning to, to fend for himself and, and becoming pretty successful at it. And he tells him about his mom passing and the, the old man that he'd just seen the day before and, and just the guilt that weighed on his soul. Father Virgil sat, thought about this for a brief moment. Father Virgil sat and told Dante, you know, you've been away 
from the flock too long, Dante. You need to, you need to remind yourself what it's like to be part of a community, to be needed and wanted by others. You need to, to give yourself over and, and embrace charity among others. Dante thought about this for a moment. It made sense to him that, you know, he, he, could, he could do more to take, take care of the people around him. So, you know, Dante took out a $100 bill out of his wallet. And he, he dropped it in the offering tray that the father had gestured towards when he said the word charity. And he felt better. Went home after that. And this went on for, uh, for a few months, you know. Dante would come in to the church. He would uh, listen to a sermon, most of it anyway. He would drop money in the offering tray, and he would feel better about himself for a little while. You know why this is going on, Dante? He's trying to, trying to distance himself from his past. He's getting himself a, an honest, hard-working job. He's actually working down on the docks, lifting heavy boxes. He's doing manual labor. He actually learned what a hard day's work is. Well, he already knew what a hard day's work is, but an honest day's work at least. See, this is around the time that... Dante met uh, Beatrice. Now, see, the thing is, Dante was coming home from a long day, and he sees a woman struggling with the groceries, trying to carry him up four flights of stairs, and he did what any rebel of American man would do, seeing a woman in distress in this situation, he automatically leapt to his defense. And eventually, he realizes that this Beatrice, that is his, his sweetheart from grade school, this girl he hasn't seen in years, ever since she disappeared when he was younger. He, he, he immediately just connects with her again. Was it, no time has passed, they're 14 years old again. And then, <laughs> it feels like love. And they sit and they, they talk for hours about old times, about missed opportunities, and eventually about Beatrice's husband. Now this doesn't feel good. Dante, he, he goes on and he sees her again, you know, day after day, little bits and pieces, obviously when her husband's not home, just talking, you know, innocent for the most part, but Dante knew that's not what he wanted, he wanted something more, and it was weighing heavily on him, so he we went to go see Father Virgil again. And he, and he went to, to tell him about this beautiful, beautiful girl, Lady Beatrice, and, and just spun this tale of, of Montague and Capulet love, just, just you know, comparing it to, to Helen of Troy does nothing. A thousand ships, pff, she, she could start World War III tomorrow and then star in the motion picture adaptation. She was just the most amazing thing in the world to him. And he wanted her. Father Virgil listened to this, and he knew that this was wrong. And he explained to Dante that this couldn't happen. You needed to respect the sanctity of marriage. You needed to respect the decisions that she and her husband have made, and that you need to rededicate yourself to the faith. You need to throw yourself into the community. You need to, to become involved in more people's lives and maybe one of those people will make you forget about Beatrice and, and maybe one of those people will be your next love. Father Virgil made a lot of sense at this time and Dante knew it's what he needed to hear but it wasn't what he wanted to hear. So he went home, slept on it. And for the next few weeks he threw himself into the church. He was up there three, four days a week. He was, he was given every penny he could in tithing. He was everything that he could be for that church. He was there all the time. And he forgot about Beatrice for the most part. For weeks this went on. And he felt good. He was helping people. He was doing good in the world. He was actually feeling like maybe he might live up to his mother's expectations. Maybe he was a good man after all. Maybe. Late one night, well past the witching hour, Dante, clothes soaked in rain, hair matted against his head, fist bloodied, shows up at the door of the chapel. 
Father Virgil meets him there, asks him what happened. Dante tries to explain, stumbling over the words. He just can't seem to get him out. He, he remembers seeing Beatrice and her husband, and he saw him lay his hands on her in anger. He can't remember much after that. All members is red and blood and pain. Beatrice could barely see. He said he helped her to his mother her mother's house after that and well didn't know where else to go. Let's to talk to Father Father Virgil once again. And Father Virgil sat and listened. And eventually, he looked at Dante and said, you did the right thing. And Dante's like, I, I might have killed a man tonight. I don't, I don't know. Is that, there's no way that could be right. Father Virgil said, don't worry. You did the right thing. Father Virgil helps him get cleaned up, gets him a fresh change of clothes, washes the blood off his hands. And Dante's very troubled by all this. Feels strange, feels awkward, but he sleeps in the chapel that night. He wakes up, stained glass windows, as far as the eye can see above him. The eyes of God shining down from that skylight, flashing red and blue and red and blue. Does take long for him to realize what that means. Dante's accepted it. He has to accept that he's going to go to jail. He has to face consequences. That's what a good man would do. That's what he should do. So he gathers his things. He walks towards the large arcing doors of the chapel. He walks outside. And he sees Father Virgil in handcuffs. For a second, he just can't process it. What's, what's going on? This isn't right. He tries to, to speak, tries to say, no, Father Virgil, no, this isn't right. I need, to, I need to be responsible for this. Father Virgil just can't even look him in the eyes. Dante finds an officer who explains to him that Virgil's been bilking his uh, flock. He's been sticking his hands in the offering tray and pulling out every dollar he can. Dante sits there. He watches them load Father Virgil in the back of the paddy wagon. And he tries desperately to muster up enough good intentions to climb in after him.